So yeah, we, we'll, uh, we do have to move on though. Um, we're gonna, uh, this will be quick. I'm just gonna hit a couple of passages real quick um, on women uh, in Islam. We're gonna look uh, then, so during the time of Muhammad now, I think I have like two or three slides uh, on now and uh, beyond, meaning in the afterlife. Uh, because you know we're, we're looking at we're looking at misunderstandings and misrepresentations in fact versus fiction uh, in Islam, and so we looked at science. The Quran is a scientific masterpiece. You should convert to Islam. No, it's not. Um, I don't think I when I think about Muhammad's picture of the universe, I don't think I could come up with something more wrong than that. If I tried, if I sat down, let me come up with the weirdest universe I could come up with. I don't I don't think I could beat Muhammad. Um, and here's another one: women in Islam. We're told. Um, I mean, you, you can see it on the news. You can see people on the news saying Muhammad was a champion of women's rights and Muhammad was the original feminist and all kinds of things. You hear this stuff left and right and I just don't know what exactly uh, they're reading, what evidence they're considering. So we'll look at uh, women in Muhammad's time briefly. We've already touched on women earlier uh, during the presentation on Muhammad, so I'll uh, just add a couple of things. Um, and women, uh, Muslim women today and women in the afterlife. So women in Muhammad's time, Jamiat Termini. Uh, narrated Abu Huraira, when Allah's messenger was asked which woman was best, so Muhammad, how can I be the best possible woman? He replied, the one who pleases her husband when he looks at her, so I guess she's got to be hot, um, obeys him when he gives a command, hot, obedient, and does not go against his wishes regarding her person or property by doing anything of which he disapproves. It's the ideal woman, according to Muhammad. Um, you look good and do exactly what you're told. Uh, what happens if you don't do exactly what you're told? Well, we're told, we already looked at this earlier, Surah 434, I just wanted to add some commentary on it. Um, here you have underlined, as to those on whose part you fear desertion or rebellion, admonish them and leave them alone in the sleeping places and beat them. We have some interesting um, commentaries on this. So this is from Tafsir al-Tabari, uh, one of the greatest commentaries ever written. It was said that this, so it's giving you the background of this verse, and this is interesting. It was said that this verse, 434, was revealed because a man hit his wife on her face. So she came to the prophet. This woman comes to Muhammad for justice because her husband hit her in the face. And according to other sources, she had the handprint when she came. The prophet then wanted to judge in her favor. Well, that's good. Muhammad's about to judge in her favor, meaning there's going to be some punishment for this man. There's going to be some uh, kind of retaliation or punishment because of what he did. He did wrong. So the Prophet then wanted to judge in her favor, but Allah revealed, men are the maintainers of women because Allah has made some of them excel others. So that's the beginning of uh, Surah 434, meaning Allah, re Allah revealed 434. Then the Prophet called on the man and recited this verse to him and said, I wanted one thing, but Allah wanted another. So, uh, Muhammad wants to judge in her favor, punish the man, but Allah reveals can be your wife. And then Muhammad says, sorry, I wanted something, Allah wanted something different. I wanted to stop this man from beating you. Allah wanted something different. Uh, also, Ibn Abbas said, uh, he explains what abandoning, abandoning in her to her bed means. Abandon her in bed, but if she refused to return, then beat her, not severely, and do not break her bone. Um, the beating severely, um, when it says do not beat severely, means beating that's going to do permanent damage, breaking bones, leaving scars, things like that. Um, so you do, you, you beat without doing permanent physical damage. And do not break your bone. Ibn Abbas said, the beating has to be with a light stick or the like. It means admonish them, but if they refuse to repent, then tie them up in their homes and beat them until they obey Allah's commands towards you. That's what the uh, banish them to beds apart means according to Ibn Abbas. It means you tie them up in their beds uh, and then you beat them until they obey Allah. Sahih Muslim, this is Aisha talking. Um, Aisha snuck out at night to see where Muhammad was going. She came back, Muhammad realized uh, uh, that she had snuck out and hit her in her chest when she tried to cover it up. So he, I mean Muhammad, struck me on the chest which caused me pain. Um, Aisha got beat by pretty much everyone back then. Uh, narrated Aisha, Abu Bakr came towards me and struck me violently with his fist and said, you have detained the people because of your necklace, but I remained motionless as if I was dead, lest I should be uh, awake Allah's apostle, although that was, that hit was very painful. Um, so this is Abu Bakr, Muhammad's closest companion and the first rightly guided caliph, would not hesitate to strike someone, strike a woman violently with his fist. 
Sunan Abu Dawood, a man will not be asked as to why he beat his wife. Why? Because it's, it's subjective. It's if he fears she might rebel against him, so now he beat him. Well, you can't judge that, so don't ask. Sunan Ibn Majah, 1986. One night Umar, so uh, the second rightly guided caliph and one of Muhammad's closest companions. One night Umar arranged a feast. When it was midnight, he got up and went towards his wife to beat her. I separated them both. So a Muslim here says, I separated, I stopped him. I stopped Umar from beating his wife. When he went to bed, he said to me, O oh, Ashat, preserve from me a thing I heard from Allah's messenger. A man will not be taken to task for beating his wife. Uh, don't interfere with me again, beating my wife. Don't do that. And Sahih al-Bukhari, 5825, Aisha said, uh, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing woman. Look, her skin is greener than her clothes. This is a situation where um, a woman, uh, Aisha, brings a woman to Muhammad uh, because her skin had turned green from the beating she was receiving. Uh, and Aisha says this, uh, she has not seen, notice what she says, uh, because Muslims today say, oh, Muslim women have it the best. Well, who should I believe about what it's like to truly live under Islamic rule? You, or Muhammad's, wife, Muhammad's favorite wife, Aisha, the mother of believers. She said she has not seen any woman suffering as much as the believing women, the Muslims. She hasn't seen any woman suffering as much as Muslims. Uh, so the pagans didn't have it as bad as the Muslim women did, let alone Christians or Jews. Um, and by the way, Muhammad uh, questioned the woman. Turns out she was um, basically saying some mean things about her husband, and so he sent her away. Too bad. He deserved it. No justice. Uh, for beating a girl to till her skin turned green. Uh, some other issues, so that's on the wife beating. We'll just look at a couple other teachings, so just so you know they are true. If you've heard about them, you're wondering if they're rumors or not. Um, Surah 4.3, if you fear that you shall not be able to deal justly with the orphan girls, marry other women of your choice, two or three or four. So yes, you can marry up to four women in Islam. Surah 2.223, your wives are as a tilth, your field. Your wives are as a tilth unto you, so approach your tilth when or how you will. Women are your field, your property, approach them how you will. Um, Muslims interpret this as uh, sexual positions because that's how Muhammad, that's how it was revealed by Muhammad. Uh, you can do anything you want, uh, sexual. Um, uh, I'm bring up the passage. Uh, it's going to give some commentary. Uh, we'll keep it shorter though. Um, Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger as saying, By him in whose hands is my life, when a man calls his wife to bed and she does not respond, the one who is in the heaven is displeased with her until her husband is pleased with her. So, if a man calls you to bed, you better do it, otherwise Allah is very, very upset with you. Surah 2, 282. Um, this is the testimony of women is worth half that of a man. You've heard that uh, in um, courts and Middle East. Uh, says, and get two witnesses out of your own men. And if there are not two men available, then a man and two women. So you either have two men or you have a man, one man, and then two women. Uh, such as you agree for witnesses, so that if one of them, one of the two women heirs, the other can remind you. So you need two women to equal the testimony of one man. Um, now, what's the reason for that? Muhammad tells us. So Muslims come up with all sorts of reasons why the testimony of a woman is not as reliable, but Muhammad tells us why that is. Sahih al-Bukhari, the prophet said, isn't the witness of a woman equal to half of that of a man? The women said, yes. He said, this is because of the deficiency of her mind. The women are stupid, that's why. Um, what's the problem? It's a problem, of course you can. Of course your testimony is not reliable. Uh, so, those are some of the teachings and you can combine those with some of the ones we looked at uh, when we talked about Muhammad, so uh, the child bride and, and things like that. And now the question is, how would this impact the Muslim world? These are the things that Muhammad taught. What would we expect to find in the Muslim world today? Well, they did a study. Uh, this is the uh, study on gender equality and social institutions report. Um, here are the criteria. So all these countries are judged based on certain criteria. Uh, are there equal opportunities for education or employment for women, for women and men? Uh, are there laws to protect women from physical violence? Are there equal rights under the law regarding ownership of property? Uh, uh, do women have guardianship rights to their own children? Meaning, can they make a claim that I should get my child in the event of divorce? Or do they have just surrender the child? Is there preference for sons? Uh, is there equal access to divorce rights 
and what's the percentage of women married or divorced by age 16? So they did the study, and uh, here's what they came up with. The orange there, the orange there is low discrimination, low discrimination between uh, men and women. Uh, so that's the West here, that's uh, Europe, that's uh, Russia, China, Japan, Australia, everywhere. Notice, the farther you get away from the Middle East, uh, the more rights you have. Um, well, there is one exception, this little place called Israel. That seems to be the only place in the Middle East where, you, where women have, uh, have, have all their rights. Um, but look, so the red, this area, uh, you have elevated discrimination, and the dark red, high discrimination. Notice, this is Muhammad's territory. This is the territory with the, the most diehard Muslims. That's a direct correlation. And if you'd like more, here's a list of the worst countries. So they surveyed 102 countries. Here's 102 countries that were the, here's the, the, the bottom 12, the bottom 12 of all the countries they surveyed. So Sudan, Afghanistan, Sierra Leone, Mali, Yemen, Chad, India, Islamic Republic of Iran, Pakistan, Iraq, United Arab Emirates, and Libya. The ones in red are the non-Muslim majority countries. So those are the only countries on that list of the worst places in the world for, Muslim, uh, for, Muslim, uh, for women to live. Um, two out of the bottom 12 are not Muslim majority countries. That's a correlation. I don't care how you look at statistics, that's a correlation. That matches. Um, that's too strong a relationship to ignore. Uh, so women in the afterlife, uh, what, women had it bad during Muhammad's time, they got it pretty rough now, what do they have to look forward to in the afterlife? Sahih al-Bukhari, the prophet said, I saw the hellfire and I'd never seen such a horrible sight. I saw that most of the inhabitants were women. The people ask, oh Allah's apostle, why is it so? The Prophet said, because of their ungratefulness. It was asked whether they are ungrateful to Allah. The Prophet said, they are ungrateful to their companions of life, their husbands, and ungrateful to good deeds. So women are in hell because they're ungrateful. Sahih Muslim 142, interesting one. Muhammad said, O women folk, you should give charity and ask much forgiveness, for I saw you in bulk amongst the dwellers of hell. A wise lady among them said, Why is it, Messenger of Allah, that our folk are in the bulk of hell? Upon this, the Holy Prophet observed, You curse too much and are ungrateful to your spouses. I have seen none lacking in common sense and failing in religion, but at the same time robbing the wisdom of the wise besides you. Upon this, the woman remarked, What is wrong with our common sense and with our religion? He, the Holy Prophet, observed, Your lack of common sense can be well judged from the fact that the evidence of two women is equal to one man. That is a proof of the lack of common sense. So Muhammad, why is the testimony of women worth half that of a man? Because you're deficient in intelligence. Why are we deficient in intelligence? Because look, your te testimony is only worth half that of a man. Muhammad's telling women how stupid they are. That's classic circular reasoning. Um, Sahih Muslim 6600. Amongst the inmates of paradise, the women would form a minority. You've heard about all these virgins in heaven. Allah actually has to create all these virgins in paradise. Uh, because there's just not enough women to go around in paradise because uh, they're a minority. So Allah has to make all these, uh, the Huris. Uh, here are the promises from Muhammad. Men in paradise receive this. Beautiful wide-eyed Huris, which are specially designed sex machines. Uh, fruits, alcohol that does not intoxicate, beds for leisure, fair attendance, uh, their earthly wives, so you get your earthly wives, Voluptuous women and the ability to indulge in sexual pleasure. Um, Muhammad even promised eternal erections. They were wondering if they could sleep with so many women. He promised that Allah would bless them with a super uh, inspired erection. Interesting stuff. Uh, what do women get? They get a palace of pipes with precious stones and pearls. Well, that's something. Uh, they will stand there waiting in corners until men call them. That's what you do as a woman. You stand in your corner waiting for a man to call you and enjoy you. And you get the duty of uh, serving their husbands. That's what you have to look forward to in the afterlife if you are a woman. Um, now, I mean, just think about this. Think about the level of misrepresentation uh, that takes place when this is what the Quran says and this is what the Hadith say and you don't have much else. You don't have much that's good. 
Um, and Muslims, again, have, a, have these sources, and they will come to the West and they will tell us, uh, Islam promotes women's rights. Um, surely Muhammad must be a prophet. He was promoting women's rights, rights way back then. Uh, it's nonsense. And how do, how do Muslims get away with this? They get away with this because people just don't know. Um, if you have an atmosphere where people don't know anything about Islam, then a Muslim gets to walk into that area and say basically anything. You're in a country that likes science? Hey, Islam is, is, is the foundation of science. Uh, you like women's rights? Hey, did you know that Muhammad, Muhammad was a champion of women's rights? Uh, you, like, uh, you, like, you like peace and tolerance? Hey, Islam, Islam is, a, is, is, the, is the best, most peaceful religion in the world. And if you don't know about the Quran and Hadith, um, you might get caught with that. And that would bring us to uh, some final issues on the peace and violence. Probably the most important uh, area of misrepresentation uh, in Islam. Yeah? Just you might have asked why it's right to talk about the other 70 versions. Yeah. What is that? That's that's the Hadith. That's the Hadith. Um, the Quran promises. Um, these horis, or these, these large-breasted virgins in paradise. It doesn't, get, it doesn't give you the number. Uh, that comes from the Hadith. Uh, uh, one important detail, though, because it, it always gets quoted. You get your 72 virgins. Um, that, when Muhammad said it, that was the minimum. That's what the lowest, worst Muslim who makes it to paradise gets. If you're a really good Muslim, and you really do some damage to the unbelievers uh, in your lifetime, uh, you get way more. You get way more. <laughs> So you can get a lot more, uh, and you get your earthly wives. Now that's, by the way, that's another good question to uh, ask a Muslim woman. How's it, how does that make you feel? You're, you're still the wife of your husband in paradise, only he now has these at least, assuming he's not very good, um, he gets at least 72 specially designed sex machines to compete with you for his affection, and you stand in the corner while, he wait, while you wait to, for him to call you. Uh, rough stuff, rough stuff. Yeah? In Islam, well, uh, you, you have a ton of commands about what you're supposed to do. Uh, you have a ton of commands in Islam. You have to do this, you have to do that, you have to do this, you have to do that. Um, at the end of the day, you're not guaranteed anything. Um, you're not guaranteed paradise uh, in Islam, uh, with the exception of Muhammad saying that if you uh, fight and die in a jihad for Allah, then you're guaranteed paradise. Other than that, you have no assurance uh, of salvation. Um, basically, the, the basic idea is um, I'll, you have the scales. Um, your good deeds are going to outweigh your bad deeds. But it does depend um, on whether Allah is going to show you mercy. And it seems to be totally random. Uh, it seems to be totally random whether he's going to do that. You just cannot predict what Allah is going to do. Abu Bakr, and this, this, is how, this is how central this is. Matter of fact, I'll start before that. Muhammad. Muhammad said that he didn't know what Allah is going to do with him after death. That's the prophet of Islam, the greatest person in history, saying, I don't know what Allah is going to do with me. Abu Bakr, the second greatest, Muhammad's closest companion, said, if I had one foot in paradise, I would still fear Allah's deception. In other words, if I'm one step in, I would still think, maybe he's about to toss me into hell. And he was just doing that to, to mess with me. Um, that's, some, uh, that's some scary stuff. And that's part of the reason... Um, that's part of the reason that calls to, to, to jihad and terrorism are so successful. Uh, you don't know. You don't know what Allah is going to do with you, especially if you're a young guy and you've, you've done some wrong things, you've made some mistakes. Um, you've got one way out. You've got one way out of this, and that's to go die taking down some unbelievers. Yeah? Yes, if I'm, about to, to, if I'm about to die in a jihad, I can live life up. And you might as well go to the strip club. That's basically what paradise is going to be like. <laughs> Let's be honest. You know, we can say. It, I mean, I, I'm not joking or exaggerating at all when I say, when I read the Muslim sources, paradise sounds like one eternal orgy. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, all right, well, where'd the field go? All right, one or two more questions. Um, yeah?
both countries that you named, the two that weren't majority Muslim, mm -hmm. majority were they? Uh, India is, is Hindu. India is Hindu. Um, uh, you, you have a large Muslim population, you have a, a small Christian population, uh, so you have a mixture. Um, but, but the majority would be Hindu. Uh, Sierra Leone, I don't know, anyone know? You know who Sierra Leone is? I don't know. Well, I think Sierra Leone was, uh, was it founded by the British and like Liberia? Um, so it would be primarily free slaves? Um, uh, yeah, religion, religion-wise, it's it's uh, some of the some of the countries, some of the some of the countries adopted it. Some of them came up with a weird mixture of Christian teachings and um, the animistic teachings, where you know, that trees of God and stuff like that. And some of them never bought into, uh, never bought into Christianity. So I'm not, I'm not sure where where Sierra Leone lies on that scale. Yeah. Oh, is it? Is it's, it's in the west? Now that's all. Africa comes around this way. Liberia and Sierra Leone. <coughs> They, they, they did tend to stick uh, more firmly to the, the, the voodoo and stuff like that. Um, I know because I, had a, I knew someone who was into voodoo, and they said, if you're in the West, you go to Haiti, that's the capital, and uh, West Africa is the other. That's Africa, if you can really want to get into the good stuff, the good voodoo. Um, anything else? Yeah. Yeah? You want to shed some light on Quranic, uh, Islamic, uh, Gabriel, and Biblical Gabriel, and Islamic Allah, and um, maybe afterwards, we have like 15 minutes to, uh, to get through the peace and violence stuff. What do you think about the peace and violence stuff? No, what do you think about the peace and violence stuff? You got something on the peace and violence? I know you know a lot about the, 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 the Quran, obviously. Yeah, I thought you could go there. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I prove that the Islamic uh, Gabriel is, is as far as for the Tabari, volume 6 and page 141. Uh, he appeared on Muhammad uh, as an old man to, to, to just using the praising word for him and that always uh, saying good words to him. Mm -hmm. Not, and that, that is the gap mm -hmm. according to al mm -hmm. volume 6, page 141. Mm -hmm. And then the same of, uh, if you talk about the, the green belt, it, it, it was an instrument of... of Satan, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's what Muhammad would hear when, yeah. when Gabriel shows up. Yeah, interesting stuff. So, yeah. And, and I'm not saying the bell is Satan. I'm saying according to Islam, Muhammad said that bell yeah, no, is no, the bell is from Satan. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and and, and, and when we talk about Allah, that is the main thing. Mm -hmm. Allah was a man, mere a man. Oh yeah. From 360 items, volume second of Bukhari two of Bukhari, these number one six six four and one six six five. Uh -huh. I know that the Muslims killed a killed a female god at one time. They killed a, they killed a lot. And Allah was uh, before Islam, the, the Lord God of uh, Hams tribe, mm -hmm. Hams tribe, mm -hmm. and that's why Muhammad's own father, Abdullah, he violated his own father of the Muslim religion because of because of Ubal, mm -hmm. the idol Ubal, Ubal twenty four feet high. And then, then he joined the uh, Hams group. Hmm. And then the, that, that was the inquiry of Muhammad. What was the religion of my father? And who are, who are those people? And if you read uh, volume 2 and at least number 164, there you will read that Muhammad had been to that Hams group. And at the end of the Hadith, it said, what he's doing here? Hmm. What is the purpose of his visit here? Hmm. And after that, the same guard became Muhammad's future God because he stole it from them. Hmm. Were you ready to convert to Islam? Huh? You ready to convert to Islam then? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a doubt to speak to Islam. Yeah. Um, I listen to we'll go into the peace and uh, peace and violence. There there are there are uh, women physicians mm -hmm. and some years ago on a PBS they had a, a whole thing on religion and there were women Muslim Saw the, uh, you, you saw the you uh, saw the you saw the map 
uh, it's the closer you get to the Muslim world, the, the more firmly you get under Sharia, where Muslims are making the laws, that's where you don't have these rights. If a woman is in the West, why don't Muslims beat their wives as much in the West? Because they'll go to jail in the West. Um, you can't stop a woman. You can't stop a woman in the West uh, from getting her PhD, um, from becoming president of the United States if she wants to, uh, because we protect those fundamental rights. Um, and that's, that's what you find. The closer you get to the center of, the closer you get to the Kaaba, uh, the, the, the fewer rights you're going to have. And so you get to, you get to uh, Saudi Arabia and a woman can't drive a car. You're talking about being a PhD. She can't drive a car down the street. She can't walk down the street uh, without having a male relative uh, escort her or, or, or she's in quite a bit of trouble. What happens if an ambassador or a consul Saudi Arabia or Syria or whatever is stationed in the, in the United States or Canada, uh, is she, can she drive a car in this country, which she can't in Saudi Arabia? Um, I would, I would, I would do, guess. Do, do Western rights? Uh, she'd, have to have, she'd have to have some sort of license. I mean, would she apply for it when she gets here? Because she doesn't, she's not getting a license no, home. I understand that. But, I mean, is she, do, do women? Uh, there are women in the United States. What 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 women what women government officials would you be referring to? Well, I'm saying that uh, uh, you do you just 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 to clarify just to clarify just to clarify you do you do have um, uh, woman rulers, but it's generally the farther you the, the, the closer you get to the to the west. But but one of the friends of uh, the former president George Bush, Prince Bandar, Saudi Arabia, was seen with flying uh, with uh, women and. Presumably, he had a wife who was also here. Would she be? Would she be able to go around during the day? She would have a driver. She'd have a driver. Would she have to wear? I, I don't know what you mean. Are you meaning her? Is her husband going to let her, or do you mean does she have the right in the United States? Is, are police going to stop What I'm saying is, her husband is an official of this country in the United States. Mm -hmm. Now, does she have to walk around in the United States with a burqa on? Or can she walk like a Western woman? Uh, again, it it, if you're talking about with the husband, that's going to depend on the husband. If okay. the husband says, you better do this because that's what you're supposed to do, right. yeah, the, it's, the United States isn't going to do that. Right. Um, in fact, if he was if, if, if he was over here and he tried to force her to do something, the United States would protect her just because just she's here. Okay. Um, yeah, we have to have liberty. Yeah, then we have to, yeah. yeah then we have to go on. Let's start with the website. Sierra Leone is minimum 60% multiple, but it's high 71%. Sierra Leone? Yes. Uh, I have to change my uh, I have to change my stats then. Interesting. Were uh, you getting ready for this up? What? Huh? I'm getting ready. You gotta do some violent stuff. All right. Um, the former always came to power. Uh, Arabia and all the peninsula, the Middle East. Women were quite affluent, and they had all the possessions. In the Middle East? Yeah. yeah, well, what, what you actually have is you had, you had some areas where women had practically no rights. Before and you had, Muhammad. Yeah, before Muhammad. You did have it. Uh, it, it, it varied from, from city to city, from area to area, where you'd have some areas where women had all kinds of rights, um, and other areas where they didn't have much rights. So, some of, so converting to Islam, some of the women would have had a, a better position because some of them really had it bad off. Um, but there were women. Who had, I'll, I'll give you an example, Khadija. Muhammad's wife. Muhammad's first wife was Khadija. She was a wealthy businesswoman. When, before Islam, before Muhammad received his first revelation, she went out and proposed to him. Um, I want to marry that guy. She's rich enough and, and he accepts the offer. So she's proposing, uh, she's proposing marriage and stuff. I don't know. You got a businesswoman, has men working for her. She picks someone that she wants to marry. That, sound, that doesn't sound like a woman who's totally oppressed and has, and has no rights. Um, be a bit more difficult to do that um, in Islam today. Yo, what do you want to do? Do you want to go through some of this? Yeah, I just want to quick ask if there's anybody that did not get to the contact information, the yellow legal pad. Okay, and the last question is if anybody came late and they missed the collection for David and the deal, if you would like to uh, give a gift, for them, uh, raise your hand. 